yes, they can compete with the top teams. I think it's going to take a lot more practice online. It's going to take the hours that I'm hoping they're willing to put in. I know, you know, some of the players want to take breaks. They want some time to themselves, which is fine with me. You know, you need to get that out of the way and you need to come back and you need to be in the right mindset to be able to get ready for the big tournament. So when we got into Denver Thursday, um, we got together in the hotel and bought a little bit. I think we even went out to eat and talked about, you know, what we would need to be executing during the tournament. And so we came on Friday with that mindset. Friday at the tournament was pretty simple. It was mostly amateur players. Um, we played against one of the top amateur teams that we had faced in the Legendary Cup. And we, we were confident we were going to beat them. This is not good looking for Rock the Turtle. The touch comes in, couldn't finish off that kill. Any hands moment. Turtle, we are still tied up at 0 0. Oh my word, baby J. He should have an easy kill here on Hunter JJX, does indeed. Now he's just wasting Rocket's nose. He's under pressure, but somehow stays alive. Not only that, baby J cleans up that kill. He's playing perfect Halo right now. His timing is outstanding. He is moving around his teammates perfectly. Awesome performance though from straight, we have to say, across the board looking very, very solid. The 3-0 against LG raised our confidence even more because they were like they are a really good team even though we 3-0'd them. I think that's the best Halo we've played as a team against them. We knew that matchup was going to be close. Um, I know we've scrimmed them a few times online, I know we've beaten them, I know they've beaten us. The series have been close, but how we played against LG, I... I personally had never seen the team play that well, just compared to the online cups to then. The, the teamwork was impeccable, to be honest. It was, everybody was talking to each other. It wasn't just all call outs being said, it was small talk, you know, I'm helping you, I'm behind you, stuff like that, that needs to be said in game. Our teamwork was really on point that series. I, I mean, I remember like everyone dying on their team after every single call out, you know? We got all the power-ups. We did everything we needed to do. It just, you know, as we moved on the tournament, it just, it was just hard to get in the groove again. After beating LG, we played Splice, and there was a bit of a break between, but I don't want to use that as an excuse, but we just weren't playing as well as we were against LG, and Splice was playing perfect Halo. Splice was pretty much playing out of their mind. I think the map rotation favored them as much as it, you know, went against us and uh, I just don't think there's anything we could have done, prepared ourselves for um, at that moment. In Halo 5, especially in a best of five, if you're not like really on point, in, like, in the blink of an eye, you can literally lose a series before you even know what happened. Like It's just so quick. We came out hot 3 0 LG, and then, like I don't know, we just started struggling somehow. Like We got like none of the power-ups, even though like Assault was coaching us really well. Like We were just never in any good positions. I think as the tournament progressed, some of these callouts that weren't really heard by the players, I, I needed to force that on them. I feel like they definitely did it a, a lot better online than transitioning to the event. Um, listening to me, listening to, you know, helping them coordinate the pushes. But they, they did well, some, some series this, tor this tournament, but um, there were some series that we didn't really execute what we wanted to do.
After playing Splice and losing to them, we played Supremacy and we came out pretty hot the first game. I believe it was Kali Flag and we won 3-0. And uh, I know for me, I kind of got an ego because of that and we lost the second game. That was kind of a wake up call going into the next game. And I believe we made it a little bit closer. At the, it was strong on Eden and it was like 92 to 100. And they won that, but they also beat like Optic 2 back in Worlds and we knew that was like a pretty good game type for them. And after that, Eden, they're just like yelling, so that kind of pumped me up. And in Fathom, I dropped like 34 kills, something like that, and we won 3-1, I believe. After game four, game five, Paul the Slayer, it started off pretty rough for us. We were down 21 to nine at one point, but I remember I remember spawning bottom snipe lift and the snipe was coming up, and I saw Hunter like there, and I'm like, Hunter, pick up the snipe, and I don't think he heard me. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just picking it up. And it was the right decision because I literally didn't miss. But there's a lot of pressure on the line for both teams here. Of course, there's the whole of the European contingent behind it, Fuse, and they'll be wanting everything for this team. They'll be wanting them to move forward. But for Straight Ripping, they don't want to be the team that loses to a European side and allowing that first ever top six placement. Place well, there's just so many great heads up plays from all these players. This is going to be game number one going to the EU squad and views. EU is coming in showing that they have got what it takes to be a top team internationally. Another set of rockets. Moe with the Ooh. sniper picking up the double kill. And you only have two kills left as far as leeway. Jeremy has such little room for air. Go for and it. Moses is still just hitting these ridiculous shots. Do and it. last one, 50 kills for a few, 50 and 37. Generally, if you're trying to grab the flag in the opponent's base, you need to toss it towards bomb center. Tossing it under the opponent's base is not going to do anything. And what a near clutch return, but oh. Ace gets three kills for a triple. Game number three going in favor of Straight Ripon. Straight Ripon panicking. You can see they're just rushing out, trying to get any capture. They've got some focus at bottom middle. He hits the ground pound, but he's not able to get the finish. It doesn't matter. Team infused the European squad. They do it. They take down Straight Ripon, and they are moving into the top six for the first time ever, making Halo history. That team is they're, they're the reason they like win every tournament like that core, and they just how teamwork does. Like we've never really played against them, so like we don't. But they haven't played against us either, so that's why like, they just outplayed us. Uh, maybe it's more of like a like we never really scrim them or know how they play, so we can't really go off of like how are they gonna start the game? Because beginning strats in Halo Five are just a huge factor. And you could like just go on a crazy snowball effect throughout the entire game and then just completely dominate. But yeah, I feel like we just didn't know their play styles or how they played. So like we didn't know how to adapt to it. The first game on Rig Strongholds, I feel like they played that game, like their positions and like their spots of like and what they decided to do is just kind of different than most other teams ever do. And it's, you know, when the game, like, players are all these scrambled spots, you don't really know where to, who to look for and, like, who to kill, you know, sometimes, because you don't even know, like, what, you don't, you know, you can't predict what they're going to do. Maybe we took them a little lightly when we started the, uh, the match on main stage with them. And they probably just took the momentum and, you know, they were just running through us, kind of, and we didn't know how to reset, basically. It definitely feels good to be back in the top eight after, you know, being in those legendary cups for so long, just what, a couple months of grinding in the amateur bracket. So I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied with the top eight because, you know, the top, the, the match for top six was just so easily in our hands and we just kind of blew it. So it's really disappointing not really, you know, getting top six because it kind of felt like that's where we should have fallen at this event. Um, kind of content with the top eight, but not really satisfied at all. But, you know, I think we can do way better. I was expecting top four, and but obviously there's things to work on, so we just gotta get back on the grind. I agree, I didn't want anything less than top four. I wanted to win the tournament, and I think at that point where you're a team getting in the top four, it's just anyone that day just playing their best can win. Uh, I, I thought we were prepared enough to get to that level, um, apparently not, and 
it's just kind of you know, reinforcement that we need to put in a lot more effort to get prepared for Worlds. They've only been together for a month compared to these other teams that um, have been together for months, if not years. It may take a couple more events, but I do see this team being able to compete with those teams such as Envious, Splice, Liquid, and even Optic. They do, they have the individual skill. Um, it's just a matter of putting all the pieces together. Well, but of course with Straight Ripping, I mean, there's a lot to talk about this team. Not only have they now got skins in Halo 5, they're gonna be coming out very shortly. That's something that's gonna be very exciting. Talk to me a little bit more about that, Mike. Yeah, it's nice to have a throwback. Let's take a look at it here. Look at that clean, sleek look. You know, I only played on straight ripping for two tournaments. Played once on uh, European soil, once on North American soil. So I'm going to be repping this one for sure. You know, it's nice to see kind of like a throwback as well. Yes, straight ripping's a team right now, but, you know, they've been around for a very long time. So I know there's a lot of fans out there that are going to want to get their hands on this. So there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the pressure. Straight skins, let's fucking go. <laughs> I was really surprised that we were finally getting him and kind of, you know, I was on the team, I think, over a year ago and, uh, you know, we were always talking about the skins and I was waiting on them the whole time, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it feels good for them to finally be announced and finally actually have that opportunity to play with them. I remember I was in the, the, the Twitch stream watching and in the chat just, you know, being all excited and hyped about the skins and uh, I like how they turned out and I'm really excited to finally get my hands on them. I mean, this is the first time I'll play under a team that has a skin, so it'd be cool to, you know, actually have that in-game and being able to rep my own team. I love the jerseys, and then when I saw the skin was like that too, I was like, I was just stoked. And I think straight skins are the best looking out of all of them, and I'm super excited to play with them. Shout out to G Fuel and GT Omega for being our sponsors and the support. If it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be here this week.